morning. Facebook land, welcome to the conversation. Uh, I'm Todd Brown, and this is Rick Coop. Uh, and each week we get together and we have a conversation. Uh, yeah. We invite you to be a part of that every week. Um, and uh, this week we ha- we're talking about something hopefully a little lighter, uh, <laughs> and that is Christian yeah. music. Yeah. Um, Christian music, like as if they're separate things. Yeah. Um, but we're talking about... Uh, we're talking about it from the perspective of uh, of both worship and and entertainment and all of the different pieces that go along with that. Um, we get together and talk a lot, but uh, every now and then we invite you. But we've been talking about this for quite some time. Sure. Um, man, this is one that gets this will this will get people uh, to the altar and worshiping God more than. Anything else? It'll also start a fight quicker than anything else. It sure will. Yeah. (laughs) There, there seems to be. um, It it seems like since contemporary Christian music Mm -hmm. came on the scene, Mm -hmm. there's been this ongoing argument. Um, It happens in a lot of churches. It's kind of sad, but a lot of people debate on what what really is Christian music. You know, is it just the old hymns? Is it, you know, and when you talk about old hymns. Uh, there's older hymns than the hymns that we sang that uh, all the folks put together and wrote mm-hmm. about, you know, mm-hmm. the old rugged cross and amazing grace and um, blessed be the name. And there, it, it, There's a lot older hymns than that, and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Sure. But it's a debate that usually stems from a, kind of a conversation about what kind of music should be sung in the church yep. and then it goes from there to what kind of music should Christians listen to and and is contemporary Christian music really Christian music and then what about those artists who are Christians but who sing secular everyday top 40 you know um, music so it, it's kind of a little bit of a thing we can get into today and talk about See where we go with it. See yeah. what our thoughts are on it. You know, we, we, we have the ability to change everything by talking about this music right now. Yeah. This I, may be the most ep- important episode oh, we've ever done. We're just going to convict people. Yeah. They're going to just yeah. break down. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is not what we're meaning to do. Uh, that is not, I mean, this see, is all sarcasm right yeah. there. Um, I think of two things that jump to my head when you talk about music in the church as in like church service mm-hmm. uh, worship music uh, things that accompany a service itself mm-hmm. so when we think of worship service, two things jump to my mind and they're extremes of the same thing and uh, one was I, I, I was the lead pastor for a service that was a, was a, a Saturday night service mm. Um, so it was already doomed right from the beginning because mm-hmm. we weren't doing it on Sunday morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're it was right. A Saturday night service, and it was um, it was all contemporary music, and it was hard driving, more like rock kind of. Okay. Music on those evenings. Yeah. Um, the idea was, uh, I can't come to church on Sunday. Come to church on Saturday. Well, mm-hmm. I don't like all that uh, chanty music. Well. We have rock music. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? Just come, come worship. Come worship with us. Anyway. So we were having a meeting with the team about the upcoming week. And one of the, one of the guys who uh, was working in it, someone had suggested a song. And I'm not even going to say what the song was because I don't want to pick on somebody's song. Mm-hmm. But what he said was, I like that song. I would go to a concert and listen to that song. I would play that song in my car. But that's not worshipful. And Hmm. so what I guess what I'm saying is, is when we think about music for a worship service, a time Mm -hmm. when we're getting together to worship God, the question is, what is it doing for the worship? What yeah. is it doing in that moment? I've had uh, the same thing can happen on so many levels with this. Mm-hmm. What I, what I as a pastor am looking for, what I, I, I think most people in a service who came to worship God that morning 
or that evening or that Tuesday or whatever. Mm -hmm. What they're looking for in music in that moment, it, to me, what I'm looking for. So let's just put it that way. This is an editorial comment. What I'm looking for is to be able to let go yeah. and connect with God in that moment. To let go of all my junk and just connect with God in that moment. And there's times when... Is that for me, and oddly in this case was one of the the high school kids. It it, it wasn't worshipful. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get from there to there. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get into a state of worship in that moment. See, I I, I can see that because for me, the, the time of worship for music is something that um, brings brings just my heart into this place mm -hmm. where I feel drawn you in. That, you know? Yeah. Um, and there are different things, there are different times, different music can do that. Amazing Grace. And I'm talking about the, uh, the old Amazing Grace. Yep. When I think of the words of that song mm -hmm. and I sing that song, um, it can it can get me there. I mean, it can, it can be beautiful. There are songs that I think, um, you, you know, that there's a there's a song. Gosh, Brian Lake sings a song called Gratitude, mm -hmm. and man, it, and it's been out for a while. And but when I listen to that song, I am just there, there's a line in that song that says, um, "There's a lion inside of my lungs," Get, yeah, and he wants to give praise to the Lord. Man, I, I mean, like even right now, I, yeah. I can feel that song having its effect on me. Then there are songs that are just songs about the Lord. Yep. Um, one of the things that I kind of, when I was thinking about, or we were thinking about doing um, this uh, topic, if you look in the scripture, there are a lot of songs and hymns of different things. There's songs about battles. There's songs about... Um, somebody being uh, lamenting and, and you know pouring out their heart and then there's songs of praise so and, and I think that the different things bring us to different places and I think you're right yeah. I'm saying all this yeah. to tell you that I agree with you there are songs that are just utterly praise just praise and worship songs mm -hmm. and but who knows who those might be and it may not be the same today for me as it is tomorrow. Well, and it may not be the same for you ever and somebody yeah. else ever. They're right. different. So uh, I, I'm going to give just a, a brief vocabulary. If you're on here and you're not a Christian, you're not somebody who studies the Bible a lot, when you read the book of Psalms, think the book of songs. Yeah. That's yeah, all songs. Exactly. Um, exactly. And in yeah. fact, there are times when you read the book of Psalms when it will start by saying, to the tune of. So mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> there are parody yeah. songs, and you, you you might say, well, this is to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy, right? Yeah. So this yeah. is the same concept. Yeah. To them, they would have read it and go, oh, I know that one. Mm -hmm. and so to the same tune, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I can tell you that, I mean, I just essentially... Um, when I was talking about I, I, I essentially took me back as soon as I did that it took me back to something that um, we have or we had I don't I don't see them much anymore maybe because like so many of those things people got sideways suddenly it got to be about the people and it went away but there used to be something called a choir of the fire yeah and, and yeah. um and I went with a group of young adults and the youth group from here and I'd never been to a, I mean, I'd come late to formal Christianity. I'd come late. Mm -hmm. And we went to um, Acquire the Fire, which is basically preaching concert, preaching concert, preaching concert. Uh, inspirational speaker, maybe, is a better way of describing it, mm -hmm. and then concert. And so playing at this were um, a Michael Gunger, who I just love his music, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and he has a 
interesting Christian walk today, but um, and a skillet. Oh yeah, and yeah. thousand foot crutch. Yeah, and uh, if you listened to Skillet and Thousand Foot Crutch back then, it was hard driving. Sure. Music, but kids were piling up at the altar. Mm-hmm. So, um, worship to you may not be worship to me. Right. I may not be able to let go in those and get into the moment. And um, so, yeah. Well, I, I like what you're saying there, Todd, because of this. What came to my mind is we need to understand that what may bring you there to that place yeah. may not bring me there, but it also may not bring the next person or the next person. And it's okay to, well, I'm going to use this, this term, and for some folks it can be a stumbling block, and I really don't mean it to, but we, we need to be open enough mm-hmm. and understanding enough to know that what works for me for me may not work for somebody else Mm -hmm. and and that's okay the ultimate goal is for someone to have a relationship or a deepening relationship with Jesus Christ and whether it be you know I've got some uh, some names that there there's there's Christian rap music I'm not Typically, a fit. I like some DC talk, mm-hmm. uh, Toby Mac, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm not a big fan of um, a, a, a rap, you know, rap music per se. But there are days when I'm cranking up some Southern gospel. Yeah. There are days when I'm cranking up some just plain old gospel music, you know, and I mean. I'm talking about like a Kirk Franklin or or somebody like that, you know, where or uh, what was uh, I can't remember. He he sang a couple songs with a with a group too. Anyway, uh, there are times when I'm I want to hear some Striper or some Skillet. Um, there, it's just kind of where I'm at in a moment, and that may be for other folks too. There are also times when Man, I just want to hear some instrumental old hymns, turn them on, mm-hmm. you know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Um, it just depends on where I'm at in the day. Well, that, that's the way it is for other folks. Kids, when you say you were at Acquire the Fire and that spoke to you, it reminded me of um, being at Promise Keep. There was something about hearing 20,000 guys, not meaning that women's voices aren't beautiful too, but as a male, there was something about hearing 20,000 men singing A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Well, and it's also shields down It's mm-hmm. when you say hearing yeah. guys, because yeah. you get a group of guys together and we're all tough and... Yeah. We don't need nobody. And then right. to hear them in that room, shields down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I can hear somebody out there listening to us. When you say acquire the fire and a bunch of kids came to the altar and came to a relationship with Christ in that day, saying, no, they were responding to the entertainment and they were responding to mm. their friends. Go. So the girls, the group of girls are going, no different than going to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. They're going to go do their thing. The, the group of guys are going no different than if they were going to TP people's houses. It's, it's, it's an emotional mm-hmm. reaction. I'm going to argue that maybe 50% of them, yeah. possibly 60% of them, are doing exactly that. Yeah. No, I, I can But if see it. ten kids went down there, I'm gonna pretty much guarantee you that two of those kids were changed in that moment and when went I, home. And I and you may come to a place for different reasons, but mm-hmm. but the Holy Spirit meets you there. 
and and this is where we get into the yeah ooh, parts that make some people freak out. I believe in the ooh parts. I, <laughs> no, I, I believe too. that the Holy Spirit fills a room like that. Yeah. And that in a room like that, a lot of us come to relationship. We talked about this week, children's camp, DBS, mm-hmm. Acquire the Fire, NYC, um, all this is youth camp kind of things. Right? Yeah. Uh, th- that's where people come to a relationship with Christ, is in that moment. They, spend, they stop their world. Mm-hmm. For me, so much of worship is... Not that you're doing some fancy special and you had to wave the incense 17 times and you had to touch the thing and eat the cracker and do the thing. It's that you stopped your world for a period of time and you and you concentrated on something greater than you. Right. And that thing meets you in that moment. I, I'm going to bring up two points, um, and they're really not related. But number one, when you said that group of kids... Mm-hmm. First thing that popped to my mind was, but what about the first kid who stood up? Yeah. What about that kid who said, "Wow, this is this is hitting me right here," and he stands up. Okay, so maybe his other friends stand up, or her other friends stand up to go with her. Yeah. But first kid, the first kid to stand it's insane. It's insane. is the one whose heart has been touched in a very special. And in a in a thing like Acquired a Fire, there may be hundreds of first kids mm-hmm. who are with their groups but right there in that moment their heart was touched and, and spoken to their group is now watching them yeah exactly so we're going to leave acquire the fire today we're going to leave yeah. vbs we're going to leave whatever yeah that group is watching that kid because they only went because the kid went and they did yes. the thing but but in that group now, they know Something happened. They know who Molly was, and yeah. Molly went first, and now they're watching Molly. Right. And did this, was this real? Yeah. Anyway. The, the second thing that you, that you talked about was the, the smoke and the lights and stuff. Yeah. There is quite a bit of difference. I'm going to be a little controversial here. There's quite a bit of difference between worship and putting on a show. Uh, there absolutely is. And I do think, and I've, and I've been to places on Sunday mornings, churches on Sunday mm-hmm, mornings, mm-hmm. where it was, you could tell it was the show. It's the show. Yeah. And that's not worship. Mm-hmm. Um, now, was it possibly where I was at in the moment? Mm-hmm. Could be. But you can also tell where it, when it becomes more about you know, this is us, and we're a great band, and aren't the aren't isn't the smoke and the lights and the, you know, I look at all these people we have up here playing. I have been at times in worship services where it was simply one person with an acoustic guitar singing some songs, and I have felt my whole world melt, and suddenly I'm in the presence of the Lord. Um, and yeah, I've watched absolutely. that happen with other people. There and you can times. tell. Oh, yeah. When you're, in, when you're in the yeah. room, you yeah. can tell whether the person, you and I can tell, whether the person in the front of the room mm-hmm. is a show or if they're there to worship with you. Mm-hmm. Are we worshiping together or are you putting mm-hmm. on a show and I'm worshiping? Yeah. Um, I was a part of a... I have to remember the people that I know and love are watching, mm-hmm. so maybe they'll know what I'm talking about, and I don't want them to know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Let's just say that I've also been in the room where the there's one guy with a guitar who is freaking awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a show. Mm-hmm. I've been there, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But here's the thing. <laughs> I use this a lot in my head when I'm thinking of the way that the Lord works, even about me. <laughs> Um, God used a talking donkey. Thank you. To, to turn a man around. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> who, who needed to be turned around. Yeah. And when if his prophets got sideways, God used a talking donkey. Yeah. To go. Hey. Hey. <laughs> We're not doing this. Yeah. So it's possible. It's not only possible. 
I know it has happened, and it happens a lot. You can have the show mm -hmm. going on and people coming to a relationship with Christ at the show. It has a lot to do with where your heart's at. That, that, the, the, the person, not the, not the performer, not the singer, not the worship leader, the person. The individual that's felt felt drawn to go. Yeah. yeah. And and I have a hard time so here's where I, I kinda get with it is okay, so if the person who is putting on the show you know, who am I? Mm -hmm. To say that what they're doing is wrong. That, I'm just saying that that's not for me. Mm -hmm. It's it's not for me. Mm -hmm. it, and, and and they may be going. Well, at what point does excellence stop? Was I supposed to stop trying to be as excellent as I can? Mm -hmm. God gave me this voice. I'm giving this voice to God. God gave me uh, the ability to play any instrument. And there are people who could just pick up anything and just play it. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm doing that. God gave me the ability to run the lights, have the perfect sound system. Uh, God knows what he's doing. How dare you? Mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm driving at. Mm -hmm. How dare you look at my gift uh, and say that it's bad because yeah. it's too slick. Yeah. It's too cool. It's two together. How dare you? And so what I will just say is, is I think you said, it's really the heart of the person who's delivering it, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I've been, in, I've been in concerts where the person who was performing, I've been in concerts and in worship services where the person who was performing, um, I've said, if that's singing, what I do shouldn't be called singing because it's not anywhere near what he can do. Mm -hmm. He is... Or she is incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mark Murphy, I think of. I've heard Mark sing at times when Mark it, when when Mark is in ultra Mark mode. Mm -hmm. You just it makes your skin crawl because yeah. it's so good. Um, Jeremy McLaughlin. Um, <laughs> Jeremy McLaughlin does the song "The King Is Coming," mm -hmm. and you just smoked. You just smoked. Yeah. Um, there's a song, yeah, anyway, um, there are people who, at the Kleins, uh, we had a, a, a family here, the Kleins, who sang, and then they just were just, you just like, we're smoked, you're done. Yeah. But they were, I knew their relationship with Christ, so maybe that makes a difference. I'm going to make a broad statement here about everything that we've done yeah, as far as the episodes <laughs> and everything. Um, it's a matter of our opinion. We're sharing our opinions yeah. and our thoughts on things. And there may be times when folks who are watching agree or disagree yeah. with what we're saying. And that's fine because these are just conversations. It's and, and I'm bringing that to today. It's the same way um, with this topic. Yeah. There are times when the music, no matter who's singing, you're going to be brought to your knees. No matter, it, it could be the worst guitarist, the worst singer, the yeah. worst piano player, you know, up there. They're, they're giving their all for the Lord. And it, you're going to fall and you're going to melt. Yeah. You're going to be just utterly, utterly wrecked. The I mean, sanctification the moment in my life yeah. occurred when I don't remember what the pastor was preaching. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the sanctuary because and he was where preaching. you're at at that moment. And, and he was preaching. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit touched me right. and I sat there and cried and slobbered like a baby. Uh, I think Steve Clark sitting down for me thought I lost my mind, but he knew what was going on. But I mean, it doesn't, uh, yeah. And that's the point about this music. Uh, there, the, the whole debate on, well, we should only sing hymns or we should only sing scriptural courses or I know churches that do combine, you know, they sing 
a couple of hymns, a couple of, you know, um, contemporary. contemporary music. Mm -hmm. uh, I know churches that separate. They have a yeah. traditional service. They have a contemporary service. I know churches that don't have any instruments at all. They do not allow That's instruments the church I was in the church. In was... Um, yeah. And no instrumental you know music because it's not in the New Testament. There's no instrumental music in the New Testament. Right. But anyway. <laughs> right. But the, the point, I guess, that I'm trying to make is this is a matter, again, of the heart. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of where you're at, and it's a matter of how you're drawn in. And just because you came, you grew up with traditional hymn music, mm -hmm. uh, and who knows, I mean, those hymns, some of those hymns were written in... I've done the research, 1500s. There's some that go back to the 1300s. If you talk about old hymns, are we talking about old hymns from, um, oh, I don't even know, some of the names are escaping me, but uh, are you talking about old hymns that way, or are you talking about the hymns and the songs of the scriptures? Because mm -hmm. we don't sing those. Um, Jewish tradition still does, mm -hmm. but in today's, Christian church, um, I don't, there's not very many psalms that we sing to music. We read them, but we don't really sing them. Just, I guess I would ask people to, to be open to, to the moment, to what's happening in the moment, preparing your heart. Let go. To, to, yeah, to receive it. Let go. That's the important part. Yeah. And I've been there. I've been, you and I have talked. I've been to those places where, man, I just, I'm not feeling it today. I just, I have this hardness in my heart, and I'm not feeling it here, and I'm not feeling it, you know, and I, I don't know, man, I just can't go in today. And, well, that's on me. Mm -hmm. That's my deal. That's not the, the deal of the people singing or, or trying to do their best anyway. Yeah. Um, if you, if you, if we look at worship music, if we listen to music during church, mm -hmm. so I think we've already, I think we can, I think we can agree, there's music you listen to on the radio in your life, or that you and some friends may go to a concert for. Mm -hmm. And then there's music that you that is a part of your worship service in church. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna argue that there are pieces of music that transcend that. I was just gonna yeah. That are well said. Yep. They are yep. both. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Because if you if you've if you've ever been to um, a Lauren Daigle concert, mm -hmm. or you've gone to a Big Daddy Weave concert, exactly. or you've gone to okay, one of these Mercy concerts, me. Mercy Me, you go, yeah. if you think ain't, there's no worship going on there, right? you need to go. Yep. <laughs> exactly. You need to let go, because exactly. it's exactly. a whole other deal while you're yep. there. Okay. Yep. So, yep. Um, but, but there are things that transcend, but there are songs that don't, but... Anyway, I think we've established that there there is yep. a difference. Yep. Um, there's what I listen to going down the road and what I li what I'm singing during worship. Um, and for me, again, the goal in worship is to let go of the outside world mm -hmm. and to come into this room mm -hmm. and be with the Lord in that moment mm -hmm. to spend mm -hmm. some time mm -hmm. to get cut my life off and come be with him during this time dedicated yep. time anyway yep. Yep. Uh, we get to, we get together with a, we get together with a three year old and we sing happy birthday to them we stop our life and eat some cake and sing happy birthday to a three year old yeah. we don't stop our life and, and sing praise to our Lord yeah well I don't sing but you're not a good singer so so what is this not what you're doing you're not putting on a show um, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna bring into something and, and I have a point that I want to make with this in my family we have a tradition 
I started many, many years ago, decades ago, when my kids were little, where we purposely sing happy birthday in the most off-key, <laughs> drawn-out, different timing. Everybody's singing at a different yeah. pace. Yeah. And it sounds like mumbling until you get to the point where you say, dear whoever. Yeah. And then it goes right back into mumble and screeching and off key and out of time. And and then at the end of it, we, we all laugh. Yeah. And, and if there are visitors there, yeah. we have to explain <laughs> This is what we do and yeah, have done. Yeah. Well, we're now finding out that other parts of our family are doing the same thing. They get together, they sing the song in the most off-key, horrible way. The point is, it's a very loving, yeah. tender Where's your heart? moment. Yeah. yeah. Where's your heart? And, and that's where it gets to with this music. What is the music accomplishing in your heart. So, when we when we think of what we do as Christians, mm -hmm. then I jump back to this idea of so I think one of the things we get, there's a book that, that both made me mad when I read it, you ever read a book that's really that it, that you are learning things from, but you also get mm -hmm. mad at them while mm -hmm. you're reading the book? And it's called Pagan Christianity. You've talked about that book before, yeah. yeah. Um, and he talks about how much of what we do as modern Christians come from the pagan religions of the Romans mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. others as they came through. Um, and he gets all freaked out about it, and, and I don't because it's like if you if you ask if you ask if you ask uh, an, an African tribesman in Uganda to worship God, he's going to worship like an African tribesman from Uganda. Yes. Yeah. So when Rome adopts the Christian religion, they. They're going to put, they're going to, oh, this is how you worship something. Mm -hmm. So now we're worshiping God. So we're going to worship. Some mm -hmm. of that's going to come along for the ride. All right. And um, I think we get freaked out about things that we, we don't need to worry mm -hmm. about. Um, if we're going to sacrifice our children, maybe that's probably too far. We shouldn't. <laughs> God seemed to get upset about that when we did that, right? Just, but to say that we we put the music in the places that we that we put the music in, we have yeah. somebody at the dais who is speaking instead of sitting in a group speaking, and whatever. Yeah. Um, but the question is: Is worship music something? And this is a very simple, quick argument. But is worship music something that was there at the birth of the church? Mm. Was it something that was a part of the church from the beginning, or is that something that the pagans tacked onto it? And yeah, I very simply, I it was there. Oh, it was there, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus I, didn't do it. Oh no, he did so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it has been part a part of our history. I'm talking about. Um, I, I like to use. There's a reason why I use this term, but uh, our Jewish cousins. Yeah. Um, that it's always been a part of who they were and who we are. We we just I, I guess you can say stole it from them. But Todd, don't we use and doesn't God use the things uh, of where we are? To reach us and meet us where we're at, absolutely, just whether, so much. Right, whether it's in the United States, Southern United States, or Northern United States, or Eastern, or, or Western, or you know, Mary and I travel. We have met a lot of Christians who don't look, sing, or dress or speak like we do. Right, doesn't matter. 
that, that all those things are cast aside when you know that you are you have that same faith. Um, there was a gentleman, his name is Damon, um, down in Antigua, and we were talking, and he noticed something that we had on that we were Christians, and I happened to look down and see that there was a Bible, and I and I. I I said, can I see your Bible? And I open it up, and dude, it's in Spanish. I mean, I I, I didn't understand a thing. You know, does it mean it's any less? No. It, it, and we go, I always use this example, and it's, I probably need to find another example, but God finds you where you are. Yes. He doesn't make you come over here, uh, but he... Because he wants you to come, and it's finding the the wise men we call them, the magi, whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. He finds them through the use of astrology. So they're looking, they're looking at like mm-hmm. whether someone's a Cancer or a Sagittarius or a right. Libra, which the Bible strictly forbids using astrology. But God knows if He puts that star there, yeah, that they'll see it. Right, and he—it's he finds them where they. He doesn't go. Well, that's just nasty. Don't do that. He finds them there, and it's the same with music. Yep. I think it's the same with with if you respond to Southern gospel, he'll find you there. Yeah. If you respond to rap, he'll find you there. If you respond to a hard driving rock, he'll find you there. It's just what I was going to say. I was just going to ask you. So, Todd, um, can somebody be saved through the music of Barlow Girl or Twelve Stones or or Striper or Petra? Yeah. Or KJ52, which is or, my yeah. rapping buddy. Or, I, well, or he, T-Bone. Old. I like T-Bone. Yeah. Or he's Toby old, Mac. but uh, yeah. yeah. But I like KJ52 because I like Eminem and he sounds like Eminem. <laughs> Yes, I so, like Eminem. Get over it. So there's Christian <laughs> punk groups like Flatfoot Six and Left Out and Children. So the Lord can bring people to a relationship. So let me ask you this. Let's, I want to go a step further. So there are Christian musicians who sing, uh, and you quote one of them quite often, um, who sing secular, non Christian Mm -hmm. music. Um, So is it possible that somebody might be touched by a song that Switchfoot sings or Bono, for instance? Uh, 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 You too? Yeah. Uh, Bono? Bono. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. Bono, yeah. But Bono is... You two is the, two different ways. Bono, Bono is the or you two is the most sneaky Christian group in the on the planet. If you listen to their words, yeah, it's See, I, Christian. It's not a group that I count as one of my favorite. But, but if you listen to their to their yeah. words, they're a Christian band, and yeah. and they're and they're they're in a they're in a way. Well, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, you know who I like. From the old day, Al Green. I love yeah. Al Green. Yeah. They're well, just if you're music. listening to Reverend Al Green, that's yeah. one guy. Yeah. If you're listening to a Me and Mrs. Jones, <laughs> yeah. maybe different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to uh, Let's Get Together, it may be not the yeah. same. <laughs> one of the groups that hit me, and then they later some of the guys left and became AD, was um, Kansas. Yeah. There's... Some pretty powerful stuff, and that some of the words uh, "dust in the wind." If you listen and read the words, yeah, it's kind of so. A, can you find God in not not in in groups that don't proclaim themselves to yes. be a Christian band? There are tons That's of the them question I'm, I'm, who I'm are asking sneaky. you, Pastor Todd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because I know, not, I, I know be, what the answer is. I may have to disqualify <laughs> myself because there are people who say I shouldn't listen to I know. Eminem. I shouldn't listen to I know. some of the other groups that I listen to. But if you think that you can't find, there's a painting. 
yeah. that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And it's a painting of a man standing on a bridge, and he has his hands on the side of his face, and it's a big, horrific... It's called The Scream. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are paintings of um, the horrors of Dachau and the concentration camps. There are paintings mm -hmm. of the ghettos... Um, there are paintings of people being whooped to death in slavery. There are paintings of horrific, awful things. Yeah. And you're not supposed to emulate those things. That's somebody somewhere telling you their reality in what happened in their world, mm -hmm. in their words. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you listen to somebody, when you listen to a piece of music, they're giving you a piece of them. Mm -hmm. in that moment and you can hear you don't have to go do that thing I think some of what we get into with music today um, is you get um, suburban raised yep. never had a real problem in their life other than whether or not they got what they wanted for lunch and they don't have, they're not allowed to have a TV in their room mm -hmm. yet you know this is mm -hmm. their life is so horrible listening to gangster rap mm -hmm. and thinking they need to emulate that. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm now I'm going to be hard. I'm going to go get a gun. I'm going to, somebody can't disrespect me. I'm going to go shoot them. Not the same. Dude, you don't have their problems. Right. You haven't come through what right. they're coming through. They're telling you about their, mm -hmm. they're telling you it in a warning. You know, listen to me quote N.W.A., and say, <laughs> which is not good um, in many ways. But if you listen to what they're saying, uh, get up, get up, get down. 911 is a lie in your town. Explaining to you as you listen to that song, you can call 911 in your pretty little neighborhood, mm -hmm. and they're going to be there like that. I call, they tell me to call 911 when I have a problem, and I call 911, and it takes them two days. To mm -hmm. get to my house to try and solve my problem that I got, I have to deal with stuff myself. Mm -hmm. Whatever, man. Yeah, right. Um, so you can listen. Right. You can be preached to in that. So your reaction to that is the police are awful. We hate them. Mm -hmm. But, or go help. Yeah. Go help. Your Lord told you, go help. So again, all yeah. of that to justify the fact that I've listened to some of that stuff that I've listened to all my life. Well, my point is, is you, can, you can use a tool however you want to. I can use a hammer to build a shed and to frame up a house. Or I can use a hammer to kill you. Yeah. What are we going to use it for? What are we using even these this music it, it's, for? I, I was just going to take us right to there. The music... Whatever the music might be, has a particular purpose to the writer and to the, the performer. Mm -hmm. And that music, if you understand it, can hit you in a particular way that can or cannot bring you to a place where you need to realize you need to either do something about it or you're part of it and it hits you in an emotional way. And for churches who are struggling with and people who are struggling with should it be a hymn should it be contemporary you know type worship I would say simply this try to understand that the words can take you someplace if you let them mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what the tempo or whether it's a piano and an organ, or a bass and a guitar and a set of drums, um, we have a guy who plays saxophone, mm -hmm. and I love it. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, hearing it, Scott play is yeah, it's just it's great to hear what he brings to because he's pouring out emotion through that instrument, and it, it that's a, has a way of taking me to that place too Paul in the book of Romans the great theological thesis of his, or, or uh, mega work of his yeah talks about something that you wouldn't think or 
would relate to music, but I'm going to relate it to music, worship music. He says, um, I can do anything. Yes. I'm allowed to do anything. Nothing is forbidden me. But if what I do causes my brother to fall, mm-hmm. then I need to stop it. And he's talking about eating meat. He's what mm-hmm. he's talking about. Mm-hmm. The, in these big Roman cities, they would have the sacrifices to the gods, and they would go lay that meat out. And then you, that's, what you, that's where most people got their meat. Mm-hmm. I mean, most people got their meat from that. Um, and he said, go eat the meat. It's fine. But if your neighbor sees you eating meat sacrificed to idols and thinks that that means you're worshiping idols and you cause them to fall into worshiping idols, yeah. then you need to you need to not do that in front of them. That What's same that word, music? in this case, that same word meat can be substituted with other words. Yeah. You know, it, whatever he's trying to teach a, a life lesson here, not just about me, but right. about the music. Yeah. If if you can't handle it, if like the whole time you're standing in a worship service and dudes playing drums, and you're like drums in the church, we should not have drums in the church. It's yeah. just making me crazy, and you can't handle it. First, try to handle it. Right. Watch. The fruit of what Jesus says. Good point. They, they will bear no fruit. Watch the fruit. Mm-hmm. Okay. If there's fruit, try to handle it. If you can't, if you if you come into that moment and you can't disconnect mm-hmm. from the world and worship God, go somewhere else. Yeah. Go. This is my church. Oh no, no, no. See. <laughs> No, that's where the problem. This is begins. where the problem starts. Yeah, right this there. This is not your church. It right. was never your church. Right. It is the Lord's church, and and it may be our church as a whole together worshiping God here. But if you can't yeah. disconnect, if you can't, I mean, this is music. Yeah. This is your pastor. If you can't listen to that man preach and get something out of it, if you cannot listen to him prophesy of the Lord and gain something from it. You best move on, because mm-hmm. you're done in that building somewhere. Some. Well, we live in we live in Muncie, Indiana, and in Muncie, yeah. Indiana, you can't swing a cat without hitting a church. Nope. You, there might be some places where you can, where there's one church. He's not really swinging a cat, but just... that's uh, that, well. Uh, <laughs> but you're right. Uh, there's a there's a million ways to skin a cat. Yeah, all of them are noisy, but. Uh, <laughs> If you can't disconnect, you can't worship. And if you can't disconnect and worship, then yeah, there's just no go someplace where you can. Go somewhere where you can. Yeah, but no. go somewhere where you can be useful. Yeah, you know, get involved, help, be a part of it. I guarantee you, if you're already being useful in your church and you're helping people, clothing the naked, feeding the hungry, yeah. uh, visiting the the sick and and imprisoned, if you're taking care of and loving on people if those are your people mm-hmm. there's no music they're going to play that's going to run you out Yep. because yep. it's your people Yep. and you just saw Joe's grandson come to church and he's been wanting him to come for three years and finally he came and the boy raised his hands yeah. during the worship service you play all the drums you want I'm in baby Something. get an electric organ let's do the thing the um you know, I saw, or we saw, we saw it together. Yeah, we did. The uh, movie Jesus Revolution. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest things there in that movie for me was when the board told him, you know, well, they're coming in barefooted and they're getting our carpet dirty. Yeah. And so the very next time they're getting together for service, the pastor's at the door washing the feet of the people before they come in. Um, <laughs> That, that's that's a moment of saying, hey, we do what we do because we're here to honor the Lord. Worship the fruit. Yes. And Worship if, what's going on. And if See what's what the Lord is here doing. Is, is honoring him, then let it be what it is. And I love the part where the, the, the pastor, you know, stood up and said, you know, if you, our doors are open to anybody and if you can't 
deal with that, then you know that the door opens. It, it goes, goes both, both ways. ways. <laughs> and then the old fellow gets up and walks from one side of the church and goes over and puts his arm around the folks who, <laughs> you know, were the quote unquote outsiders and said, "Come, go, go ahead, pastor. You know, do your thing." And that's kind of the way it is with this music, you know. Yeah. We, you know it, it goes it, both the ways there. Yeah, it, you know it goes both ways. There are people who can't sit through a service where some people are playing hymns mm-hmm. and just a piano. Yep. They, yep. These are just old people. They yeah. can't deal with that. You know, maybe you enjoy watching. Maybe you enjoy watching your grandma let loose. Mm-hmm. And connect with the Lord, or maybe maybe that maybe opens as your much heart. as you're expecting them to understand your music, you need to understand theirs. You do. Yeah. So, um. Yourself. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of other stuff that I didn't even talk about, but I, I, I yeah. begin to wonder where we go from. I think the biggest thing I would, the, the biggest thing I feel like I didn't say that I wish that I want to make sure and say is. singing of hymns and music as a part of the church is as old as the church. It's as old as the synagogue, the temple, the the Jewish church. And when we you said, and it breaks off of something that you said, and you said, um, our, Christian, our Jewish brothers. Mm-hmm. And I just was reading about Paul, the apostle Paul, mm-hmm. who was Saul. And, and one of the things the guy said is is we think because we're here and Jewish people are, the Jewish religion is here and the Christian religion is here and there's such separate things. We think of Paul as converting to Christianity. Mm. Paul, nor anybody in his frame, would have thought of him as converting mm-hmm. to Christianity. It's just the next, next step. It's just the next step. It is... Mm-hmm. As Jesus said, I don't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. It is the fulfillment of and the progression of that same faith in Yahweh, in Mm -hmm. Father God. It is that same, it is a progression of that. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the Psalms and we sing the Psalms, and there are, there are a lot of hymns that are basically Psalms, but the music, Mm -hmm. uh, um, I I just, what went through my head was very sixties, um, um, the Ecclesiastes to everything turn oh, turn turn, turn. Yeah. Uh, sneaky sneaky yeah. religious yeah. song, <laughs> yeah. but um, it's always and forever been a part of worshiping God, mm-hmm. letting loose and singing. Jesus in yeah. the last night before he was crucified sat with the brothers, sat with his followers in that evening. And led them in a hymn. Mm-hmm. And I loved the picture that the person I was reading about this was, uh, painted, and that was this kind of hymn would have most likely been a responsive hymn. He would have sung something, and they would have sung back to him, Hallelujah. And he would have sung something, and they would have sang back to him, Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine sitting yeah. in a room with Jesus singing yeah. to you yeah. about his Father? Um, and that's that's the moment that I hope to recreate when we get together and worship as a crew. So, um, and one of the things, last things that I wanted to get, each one of us has our own likes and dislikes. We have personal bias. Um, sometimes in the Christian faith, we get more stuck. Some folks get more struck stuck on tradition than they do the real faith issues. Some people get more stuck on, well, we must, we, we got to keep keeping the old, we can't do keep doing the old stuff. We got to do all this new stuff. There, there needs to be a point where we come together and say, what, what's going to honor God? Uh-huh. What's going to be a blessing to him? What's going to draw us into a relationship with him? And sometimes it's the old stuff and sometimes it's the new stuff. And sometimes it's a combination of both of those. Um, just because it's old doesn't mean it's bad. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's great. Nope. We have to come to a place to, to say in our hearts, are we giving glory to the Lord? Are we honoring Him? Are we worshiping Him? 
And if it does, then that's where we need to be. Are we singing about a uh, pastor? He was the senior pastor in Alexandria. Uh, was a teacher for me for a while, and he said, "Are we singing to about us? Or are we singing about him?" Mm-hmm. Ask yourself: Are you singing about us? Or are you singing about him? And it may be a fine line. But are mm-hmm. we singing? Which which, which we do? Oh, I, you were mentioning um, the different kinds, and I had a thought. Sometimes I had a thought flashed in my head, and that was: Have you ever gone to one of your kids' concerts? And thought this is horrible. I have to leave. I just have this. I, I, I haven't. Yeah. Personally. No. Yeah. Well, I just have this image of God yeah. listening to us. Yeah. Oh, sing great. To, Boy, yeah. Listening to us sing to Him. Yeah. He has millions of angels. Yeah. Who sing to Him constantly. If you check out the Book of Revelation, if you check out yeah. the, any any of the of the prophecy about being in heaven and what's going on up there his he's rocking baby yeah he's got the music on and it is constant yeah and they're singing holy 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 is the lord god almighty it's just a constant thing yeah. so now we stand in front of him and sing yeah it's his Three-year-old singing a beautiful song to him, just as beautiful. making up the words yeah. as they go along about right. how great he is. Right on Father's Day, yeah, it don't matter to him. Yeah, you can do it, whatever, man. I just think of him as our dad. Yeah, he's dad, and yeah. he's our Father God, and he's yeah. listening to us sing to him. And we stopped our life, and we're singing to him. Yeah, he's. What a great, what He's, greater honor. I mean, it's cute. There's got to be times where that's, oh, that's cute. <laughs> come, come here, come here, come here, come here. Bless you. Look heart. at this, look at this. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. You go. Um, it, there's nothing we're going to do that is over the top. No, him. not for him. But it's beautiful to him because yeah. we're his babies. Yeah. Yep. And that's a great way to think about it. Uh, I, I was going to bring up a thing about, I know a pastor friend of mine, he said if it really upsets you, and this has to do with the, the music part of it, mm-hmm. if it really upsets you, just hum about it. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> so if the music upsets you, just hum. Yeah. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> yeah, what a great thing though. Yeah. To, uh, I, I, to me, that's a great point to end this on yeah in that it's god's children singing to him in whatever method they're most comfortable in and he likes it yeah are you singing to him yeah that's the question yeah are you singing to him yeah or are you put on a show yep there you go when you stop singing to him there's where the break happens. That's, that's when it goes. Guys, thank you for hanging out with us. Yes. Um, and we, we hope you'll keep hanging out with us and joining us in the conversation. Join in. Make a comment. We answer, believe it or not, even if we really don't like what you said. Yeah. Uh, we try to be nice and understand uh, we don't have to agree. And if you have any ideas of things that you'd like us to talk about, things that might be interesting to you, and you want to share some thoughts on that, let us know. We'd be glad to... Give it a look. Yeah. yeah. So hit that like button if you're in that spot. If you did like it, don't if you didn't. Uh, subscribe or follow or however you'd like to yeah. do. We appreciate it. Uh, it keeps us rolling. So, guys, have a, a great rest of your day. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.